Chronic refractory plantar fasciitis is very common in a painful condition. Those situations that do not resolve with time are treated surgically. This is characterized by cutting through and removing the tissue. An innovative technology introduced by 10X Health uses local anesthesia and ultrasonic energy introduced percutaneously to also cut through and remove the diseased tissue. The safety and efficacy of this procedure is not influenced by the setting in which it's performed. It can equally and effectively be done in an ambulatory surgical center as we will be demonstrating, or also in a procedural room or even in a clinical environment. This 43-year-old female computer programmer has a nine-month history of intolerable posterior foot pain. It interferes with daily activity, particularly when she gets up in the morning and it gets worse as the day progresses. When she rested over the weekend, it gets better, only to recur when she starts ambulating uh, during the work week. She's had one cortisone injection that helped about a month or two. She uses arch supports and night splints, but says the symptoms overall are not getting any better. I know you've had pain in your foot for quite some time now. Let me ask if um, in the last two or three months, uh, do you think overall your symptoms are getting better, worse, or staying about the same? They're not getting better. If anything, they're getting worse. And can you characterize uh, how you feel the pain or when, when do you feel the pain? Is there anything that makes it worse or any time of the day when it's worse? Or First thing in the morning is the worst pain. I see. And if you stay on your feet, does it go away? Or? No, throughout the day, it continues it, to get worse. So by the end of the day, it's worse yes. as well. And if I were to tell you that sometimes these things just go away on their own, and that if you give this time, your foot pain will all go away, is that the kind of thing you could believe, or does it feel like that could happen to you? I don't think that'll work for me. Okay. Um, would you mind showing me where you feel most of your pain? Right there. Okay. Let me just see if I can reproduce. You tell me if I hit the spot that is most okay. tender. Right there, that's it. That's it? Mm -hmm. Well, this is the kind of problem that uh, the procedure we talked about is usually pretty effective uh, to treat. And uh, based on what you've told me, I'm prepared to go ahead. Uh, do you have any questions or uh, concerns? No, I'm ready. Okay, good. We'll just go right ahead then. Okay. The patient is positioned to allow the procedure to be comfortably performed and be comfortable for the patient as well. Hello, how are you? Good. Okay, this is the side that's bothering you, right? Okay, I'm going to slip your booty off. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to once again confirm the problem. So, I'm going to poke around a little bit and you tell me where it hurts the most. Yeah. Okay. All right. The next thing we'll do is I want to see what that looks like with the ultrasound. So, you feel the gel. won't be painful, uh, but it'll tell us precisely where we want to treat this problem. So with the ultrasound, I can see what's called the plantar fascia, and I can see where it is attaching to the bone, and it's thickened and considered abnormal. So this is consistent with the problem that you're having clinically, and this is the kind of problem that usually responds to this treatment. I'm gonna take a little bit different view, just so I can see the extent of it to make sure that we get it all. And so it's a fairly, fairly substantial area. So um, I can certainly understand why you're hurting and I think it's reasonable to go ahead and treat this. Now, the next thing is we'll be preparing this just like you're having a cortisone injection. You've had those before. So this won't be painful to you. Now, the first thing we do is we clean this so that uh, try to avoid any potential for infection. So this may be a little cold, be a little wet. Now, we're going to introduce the instrument through this part of your heel. 
and it usually will hurt a little bit with the local, but not too bad, and then you shouldn't feel anything else. Okay. Now, I'll tell you everything I'm going to do. The next thing is we'll put in the local anesthetic. A thin layer of non-sterile gel is used to cover the face of the ultrasound transducer, and it is placed in a sterile sleeve. So in this instance, we've again indicated or marked the point of maximum tenderness, and we'll now study this with the um, ultrasound to assure that this is consistent with the pathology that was identified earlier. And we can see immediately by putting the sensor on the X, some calcification right at the medial tubercle of the calcaneus, indicating precisely the site of attachment of the medial aspect of the plantar fascia, which is, of course, consistent with the pathology. So in this particular instance, we have found that the best tolerated approach, at least in our practice, is to go through a medial puncture site. Sorry, you'll feel a little discomfort. This will be the worst part of it, a little bit of burning. And then through this medial portal, sorry, the local anesthetic is delivered. I will uh, frequently uh, try to confirm the orientation of this with the ultrasound. There we see the tip of the needle coming in just distal. We'll inject that area. Now we'll come a little bit more proximal. Still a little superficial. So this is a very good technique to assure that we're directing our probe or our microtip where we want it to be. And that's right, as you can see, the uh, tip of the needle is exactly over that little uh, ostified or calcification. So this is precisely where we want to introduce the microtip. So we'll withdraw the anesthetic and create a, a puncture wound precisely uh, at the orientation and uh, align with what was seen with our uh, local anesthetic. I like to use the blade to separate the septa to allow us to introduce the probe a little bit easier since the tissue in this part uh, of the heel or the part of the foot is very, very dense. So now we'll again identify the pathology, which is seen very readily at this juncture. The microtip was then introduced. This again is going through very dense tissue, so it's sometimes a difficult. So now we can see that the osteophyte that represents the pathology, we can see the white tip right in the center of the osteophyte. So this is precisely where this uh, lesion needs to be treated. As we uh, depress the foot pedal, the energy is imparted. If the system gets clogged, we'll hear the signal, but we will not hear the sound of the ultrasonic energy. So we are treating this uh, particular area in a very focused manner since this truly represents the focused area of our pathology.
Now we see the microtip just proximal to that lesion, and we are treating that area. Notice the movement of the handpiece is a very gentle, slight back and forth movement. Should also be noted that the uh, length of the uh, micro tip is sufficient to reach the pathology through this portal. This is one of the pathologies that we will sometimes use the both uh, long and short axis views. There we see the lesion and we see the probe right on the lesion, just as suggested by the other view. So we can see that we're very thoroughly and completely treating the area. So this, in our judgment, is a very discreet uh, lesion and is a very discreet treatment for the lesion. Ordinarily in the plantar fascia, the treatment time is around a minute. Uh, sometimes it's uh, less if in such as this, where the pathology is relatively discreet and has uh, been uh, very focally addressed uh, with the uh, microtip. In some instances, it's more diffuse and uh, a longer treatment period is uh, uh, required. So now we'll again switch to the long axis view. And we'll uh, treat a little bit more uh, distally uh, in an attempt to assure that we've um, addressed the entire lesion. So we've now rotated the sensor. We can see the tissue move. We can see the tip of the micro tip just distal and superficial to the density. And now we see it again right over the density. So we'll treat that area. That's the site of degenerative plantar fascia attachment. So our treatment time is about 55 seconds. And for this particular lesion, I think that's probably adequate. We've treated the areas that we were planning to treat and that we had identified on the diagnostic. So with that, we'll withdraw the microtip. The area is cleaned, and a suture isn't necessary. We're able to close these wounds rather reliably simply with uh, steri strips, and then a barrier type of dressing is added. On the clinical examination, be sure to understand the point of maximum tenderness. The patient should point this out, and it should be confirmed at the examination. At the time of the procedure, confirm the pathology with an ultrasound diagnostic test. For plantar fasciitis, it is wise to use both the long axis and the short axis ultrasound examination. The prep and drape for this procedure is similar to that of a steroid injection. When introducing the local anesthetic, not only is the track anesthetized, but it is helpful to go to the insertion of the plantar fascia on the calcaneus. The technique itself can be performed through a medial approach or a direct plantar approach. In this instance, we demonstrate the medial approach. The incision of the skin is with a simple puncture of an 11 blade knife, but should go deep enough to allow the micro tip to be advanced to the site of attachment. The movement of the microtip is a back and forth motion. Take care not to introduce the microtip 
with a side-to-side -side motion. So uh, are you having any discomfort now? No. And did that bother you while we were doing the procedure? Not at all. Okay, good. Well, tonight you may have some discomfort. And so uh, before you go to bed, I'd put some ice on it and maybe take a couple of Tylenol. And to the extent that you have any pain tomorrow, which you may, I just take the Tylenol and continue to take that as you're having discomfort. You may need it for several days after the procedure. Now, did you come in with a walking boot? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure that you need this, but if you find that it's more comfortable, go ahead and use your walking boot. And you can just discontinue it or quit using it when you feel like you don't need it anymore. Now, for the next two or three days, I really don't want you to do very much. Just take it easy. Uh, we will see you about two to three weeks after the procedure. And at that time, uh, during that time, you should be taking it easy, not very active. Um, after the consultation, if everything is good, we'll allow you to continue to increase your activities towards normal. So by about six weeks, if everything's good, you should be getting along pretty well and then hopefully can resume normal activities after that time period. So these instructions are summarized here. And uh, here's my contact phone number. If you have any trouble before your return appointment, you be sure to let me know. And the uh, things that I just reviewed with you are, are shown here on the card. Do you have any questions? No. Okay, you're welcome. Good luck to you.